Hello friends, thank you so much for tuning in for this video. I'm glad to have you here. Um, this is a concept that I think I've mentioned throughout various videos over the life of my channel, but I've never really devoted one video to the whole idea. But it is products that just don't look that impressive to the eye, but they actually perform way better than you might expect. I've actually compiled a full face of different products that I feel this way about. A lot of it has to do with the color, some of it might have to do with the texture, that just at a glance you do not feel like this is going to be some tremendous product. Um, one that really most recently led me here is the Warm Soul Blush from MAC. I mean, who sees this and thinks that is going to be beautifully radiant? Radiant, but it actually is completely gorgeous on the skin. I mean, I love this blush. There's a lot of blushes that I feel that way about. There's some eyeshadows, different face products. You'll see as we go, you're gonna be like, what? You know, and then it all kind of comes together to work out. But it's kind of stuff that you have to have a little bit of an open mind with. Case in point. <laughs> Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse. I mean, here's one that I feel like is the butt of a lot of jokes when we're talking about early 2000s makeup. This is not the original one I've ever had. I actually repurchased one of these fairly recently when I saw somebody um, just looking amazing with this on Instagram, and I was like, oh, I should go back and try that again. But I mean, it's a moussey texture, and it may have been one of the pioneer type products that has led us to many different brands putting out unusual textures. Like I'm thinking of all kinds of goopy jelly textured blushes, highlights, and eyeshadows. I have this in the shade Nude. It's light four. And I think part of the problem is in the application method. I think back in the day, ooh, it does have that interesting texture. Um, back in the day, we probably just like caked a ton of this on and maybe our blending wasn't so good and the look left a lot to be desired. But today I'm putting this on, I'm kind of dabbing it around with my fingers. I'm getting it just a little bit like worked in, just barely. And then I'm gonna use a beauty blender to tap it all in. And I have very well moisturized skin underneath. I mean, the texture of this really, it's moussey, but it's not that dry. Once it kind of works down into the skin, it actually feels quite creamy. So I've got this sponge from e.l.f. here, and I'm gonna use this to tap it into the skin. I'm trying to remember who brought this back to life for me, who I saw using it. But their skin just looked amazing, and I was like, oh, maybe that's worth another Another shot. But I'm tapping this all in and I feel like I'm getting kind of a medium coverage out of it. But using a sponge I think is further encouraging that texture to go from kind of lightweight moussey more into that richer creamier feeling texture. Okay it's all blended in that's one layer. You're telling me I look drastically different from what a lot of different foundations might do for me. Okay, I'm gonna apply a little bit more around the nose. I'm gonna build it up a little bit more in this zone. Now they had a phenomenal concealer from this line too. Some great blushes as well. Um, but I remember the concealer being just even creamier than the foundation. I feel like this product may have gone through a bit of a reformulation somewhere along the line because I feel like originally it was drier than this. Now it's feeling like, yeah, you touch it, it feels kind of moussey, but it really melts down with a nice creaminess. But the concealer was always good and there were beautiful blushes in this line. I wish they'd have never gotten rid of those. Okay, so there's with a little bit of building, um, you know, you can get up close to my skin. You can see not everything's covered, it's medium coverage, but my overall skin tone is nicely evened out and I'm not seeing any weird clinging to any one area. That being said, I did moisturize myself really well and I have kind of used it like a primer, but my sunscreen is the Supergoop Glow Screen. So I paid attention into using some extra nourishing stuff underneath. Yeah, it doesn't look that great, but it can perform. Here's another product that I think kind of has a bad reputation just on looks, and it would be the classic lipstick style stick concealer. This is the, um, I believe it's called CG Smoothers one. I have it in the shade Light. Again, this isn't the original that I may have had back in high school, you know, I've repurchased these things more recently. But it really has that format that many of us have known for, you know, decades really. And I think a lot of us might see this type of concealer that looks like a lipstick tube and think, you know, that's gonna be dry. That's gonna just cling to certain areas. It's gonna look really cakey. This one's actually really 
smooth. It's got quite a bit of moisture in it. It has a pretty nice glide on the skin. I would say it's not maybe quite as moisturizing as my Neutrogena stick that kind of has that hydrating core in it. It's the Hydro Boost Stick Concealer. But this is a little easier to find. It's just a little thicker and it still works well. In a pinch, this could be like all over foundation if you wanted it to be. I just put it pretty much everywhere where I like to generally apply concealer. And I'm going to use my Real Techniques brush that I like to use to blend out concealer. And then if I feel like anything's looking the least bit dry, which you may run into that from some brands who put out a concealer stick, maybe it is a little more on the dry side. Once you blend it in, you can kind of tap over it with a sponge, you know, and really further work it in. But here I'm maximizing coverage by not really buffing away the product, more so pressing it in. But it's not looking heavy at all, I gotta say. And I'm always on the lookout for that in the under eye area. But the color is really good too, as you can see. But no, it doesn't look like much. And if anything, we may have a negative association with that kind of a product that's looking like a lipstick tube concealer. So I'm just dabbing over it now with that Dampen Beauty Blender just to ensure that everything is looking really one with the skin from these products that traditionally we may not think are capable of that. I really had a hard time thinking about this whole idea when it came to powders because I kind of feel like powder is powder, you know? Um, this idea was born more out of the idea of color products like blushes and eyeshadows and things that you just glance at and you don't think that color is gonna translate in a big way on the skin, but it kind of does. But you know, furthering this idea in my mind, I thought, what would people look at and maybe just, you know, pull back from a little bit just on appearance? And I thought about those really really white powders, like kind of HD setting powders, including this one from e.l.f. This is the under eye setting powder, and it is completely white. And if you get a really close look at it and get a chance to do some swatches, actually, a close look won't even tell you this, but um, there's sometimes I pick up on a little bit of like a shimmer in there or like a little fleck of something. Sometimes I swatch it and I can't even see it. Sometimes I can. I don't know. It's like a little phantom thing. I don't know. It comes and goes. But anyway, using something light and white and bright on the under eye area um, might kind of give some people pause at times. But actually, this little product I think does a phenomenal job on the under eye. And it's another thing I came back to more recently. I remember trying it when it first came out, kind of setting it aside, and then I returned to the product later and I realized, you know, use sparingly. See, I'm not caking this on. I'm getting a little bit of product here. I'm barely getting the brush loaded up and then I'm dabbing it on this under eye area. And I find when I do, you know, you might be a person who gets through the day just fine without catering to setting your under eye at all. But for me, it really tends to make a difference in the way things last. And you'll notice I'm also gonna throw this stuff on the T-zone. But how do you feel about those white powders? You know, they claim to be translucent. Not all of them always come off as purely translucent, especially if you're applying a lot of them. I mean, we've all seen horror story kind of pictures um, where there's a big flashback, or instead of looking invisible on the skin, they actually look pretty visible. I think it's really about exercising some self-control and the amount you put on. But I'm feeling pretty good about that right now, and I've just got it on T-zone, not really all over the face. Here's another thing that I think, you know, kind of threw me at first because I didn't expect as much out of this product as it was able to give me. And I know it's a super popular brand. A lot of stuff from this brand gets hype, but the contour shade in this Film Star Bronze and Glow um, duo from Charlotte Tilbury, like, I don't feel like that looks like it's going to do much at all. I don't look at this duo and think, I'm so wowed. Even the highlight, you know, you see that and you think, mm, okay, is that going to be that much? On first glance, I don't think they look that incredible, but they really do perform. Now, I talked about this recently in a Shop My Stash video, I believe it was, so if that sounds familiar to you. But look how I'm able to use that and actually like get this nicely shadowed looking cheekbone effect there. And it's this, you know, it just doesn't look like that much to me. I also remember feeling this way about my Hourglass Bronzer. That was a big one for me. The one in the diffused bronze light. When I first got that, I swatched it even and thought, this doesn't look like anything, but it does look pretty in the compact. It's kind of one that you go back and forth on that swirled design in there makes you think, oh, that's kind of impressive, right? And then you swatch it, you're like, how is that possibly going to show up? And then you put it on the skin and it's like, whoa, this is fantastic. This one, I would say this looks kind of unimpressive to me.
but it goes there. And you know, it may look more impressive if you're a fair skin tone and you're like, yes, it's a light contour that may actually work. So I get that there's some personal opinion, there's some personal perspective, you know, but there's a contour that actually is doing something, but it doesn't necessarily look like it is. Blushes are where I have a ton to talk about here. Um, we mentioned Max Warm Soul, you know, this just, it's got a sheen. If you're looking up close at it, it does have kind of a pretty um, sheen to it. It's sort of a baked, it's that mineralized formula, um, but it does not look like much, but it's gorgeous on the cheeks. Um, even this one from e.l.f., look at this. Like, I mean, who thinks that's gonna show up with a lot? This is always cheeky, the primer infused blush. Very, very pretty though. It's matte and I mean, it's not doing anything really with the catching the light effects. It's very light seeming, but it actually looks really pretty on. Got Brick Rose here from CoverGirl, which at a glance might look a lot like Warm Soul, but it is a little different, a little bit deeper. There's a little more rosiness here. This is absolutely stunning. Um, the Mulan blush from Color pop. This is in the shade Matchmaker. I mean, what's that gonna do? It's actually really, really pretty. This may be one that I have to throw on for you to show you. I mean, I wish I just had a few more cheeks available so I could pop these on different ways. Oh, and here's another one that I always think about with this idea. Benefit Dallas. I mean, like how? How is that so pretty on? I mean, it kind of reminds me of the Mulan blush. Somehow that gives a pretty kind of neutral, but yet a hint of a flush to the skin. It's so interesting. So which one do we apply today? Maybe I've got to just keep these handy and in upcoming videos feature different ones on my cheeks so you can really see. But I used Warm Soul really recently, so I think we're going to go for this Mulan blush here. And you're thinking, you know, what? what is that going to do? It's got a little fine like super fine golden shimmer in there, by the way, but I don't notice a ton of that on the skin. How is it giving me this pretty, look at that. That? That. It's nice that makeup can still surprise me even after all these years. <laughs> Seriously, guys, might this be a blush shade for someone who thinks, I don't really like blush, I don't wanna go around with rosy cheeks, whatever. This is so pretty, and I guess the word is casual. You know, for someone wearing their little three-quarter sleeve little top like I got on, yeah. This is the blush for you. It's buildable, you know, it really is. How did it build to that much? I just love that. Then for highlight, oh, I did grab one out um, for highlight. I thought of my Laura Geller Baked French Vanilla just because you might think, what the heck is that gonna do? It just looks like a matte um, little baked powder here, but it actually does have the slightest sheen and it's really pretty and brightening on the skin. I'm not saying it turns out to be like a disco ball surprise, like no. It is on the very low end of glow, like the lowest end possible, but it's really brightening and it looks, I think, very radiant on the skin. Are you still seeing a little glow? Because it's got some, but you wouldn't assume it to have much just by looking at it. I'm gonna brighten right here up on the forehead. Give a little to the cupid's bow. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm pretty impressed here. Now I can still see just a hint of a dark circle. You know, that concealer wasn't moving mountains here, but as far as texture goes on the skin, were we able to achieve a nice skin-like texture out of Dream Matte Mousse, uh, older variety stick concealer, one of those white setting powders. We used a contour that really looks like, what, is that gonna do anything? Yes, it does. This is my blush and this was the highlight and it came together so well. Now I'm not saying every single product that looks unimpressive or that you'd raise your eyebrow at would do amazing things. But the ones that I'm talking about in today's video really can execute. Oh, I also pulled one other idea as far as highlighters, the e.l.f. Illuminating Palette. If you haven't tried this, these look really, really soft here. And they just like, if you get a close up look, they don't really look super highlightery, if you know what I mean. But they have a gentle sheen, a gentle glow across the skin that might even remind you a little bit of like an hourglass type powder. I mean, it's a super gentle, but really, really pretty glow. If you like barely their highlighters, you might look into that. For eyebrows, I'm gonna pull out a couple of like super basic products here from e.l.f. I know this is popular because it's become like their best selling eyebrow product, the Instant Lift Brow Pencil. I wear it in neutral brown, but it's such a basic looking pencil. And I'm sure there are some people who have thought like, what's this gonna do for me? Is this gonna be so great? No doubt not everyone on the planet has tried this. 
this yet, so I'm going to demonstrate the fact that it does work really well. Um, it's a, it's a twist-up pencil, but it's not as fine as the finest ones that are out there being sold right now. The brand Elf itself does offer like a finer tipped brow pencil too. And many brands do, but what you might find from this, which isn't an exceptionally large pencil and it's not shaped in some funky shape, it just twists up and down. It's just a simple retractable pencil. And um, I think you'll find that the creaminess level is really nice because it transfers onto the skin nicely, but it's not too gunky creamy. And it also does really fill in the brows faster than um, some of those smaller pencils. Also, I don't know that I wear this one down quite as fast as I do some of the skinnier pencils. Also, the tone is really good for me, but you know, it just, it looks very basic. I guess I could have gone more basic and gone with like some old school sharpenable eyebrow pencil, but some might also cast judgment on this one just for the price and think, what can a $2 brow pencil do for me? But I promise it's good, you guys. What I question is just, is the staying power really good? Because I'm not creating a brow out of nothing here. So I'd like to know how it lasts for some of you guys. There that is. And then their simple little brow gel, you know, it's double-ended. I don't really know why they bother, but one says eyelash, one says eyebrow. If you wanted to put this in your eyelashes, you could. I just use one side up and then move on to the other. You know, it doesn't look like much. These never look good after you've been using them to set your brows. <laughs> like they get this kind of like, you know, brownish goo type look, but it does the job, you know, it sets your brows for cheap. Hello, we're using Milani eyeshadow primer today. Does it look like much? I don't know. It will always hold a special place in my heart. I don't care what it looks like but we're just popping this on. This is just a necessary step every day. When we're talking about eyeshadow here, um, there's definitely a biggie that comes to mind, and it's the CoverGirl single in the shade called Mink. This is one of the best one shadow look eyeshadows, and I talked about it in my makeup that seems more expensive than it is video, and I believe there's a little demo in that video, so I'm not gonna use it today but it looks so, I don't know, common. It doesn't feel like that could be crease, that that could be lid, that that could just be your entire look all in one. By a swatch, it's kind of starting to speak to some of you, right? But it's amazing how that shade can also provide contrast and just be like the most beautiful, effortless, like you'll actually get compliments on it kind of look, you know? And you're thinking, why do I have all these palettes then? It's just a really beautiful shade. But here's a quad that I pulled out that I just thought, Mm, it just doesn't look like much. And I gotta admit, I haven't used this in a while. This is Urban Basics. And yes, it's still kicking. Still being sold in Ulta, guys. Who's seeing this and thinking, wow! I mean, maybe somebody is, so I shouldn't assume. But to me, it just looks a little on the dull side, a little bit meh. And I mean, I had a hard time finding palettes in my collection that I felt like that about because many things that I lay eyes on, even if the color scheme isn't like shouting at me with some gorgeous pop of color, I can still look at it and feel like, you know, that has value. Okay, that has worth. But this one, you know, you, you might kind of wonder. The average person might. And it has been a while since I personally have used this. So we're just gonna see together if I can bring this one to life on the eyes. We've got shimmer in these shades. This looks like kind of a matte, like dusty periwinkle lilac kind of deal. And the white shade here looks matte as well. So I think I'm going to go to this and see if we can use that in the crease a little bit. Did anybody else have this one from way back? You know, were you having days where it was like, am I going to use Shimmering Sands or am I going to use Urban Basics? <laughs> shimmering Sands, I don't know. It also doesn't look like that incredible maybe at a glance, but the shades all do have a pretty shimmer to them and that's kind of appealing. This one, maybe instead of looking at it with a total disappointment feeling, you might just look at it and think, what kind of look is that actually gonna give? So I'll try to answer that today. I know that's been the pressing question of the beauty community on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so I've taken this shimmer, this shimmer that's really not all that dark, and I've established some kind of crease here. Then I think I'll take um, some of this shade, this sort of like ever so slightly blush color, like blush pink, you know, barely there pink, and blend a little bit of that around the outside. Heck, if we got matte white, we'll apply a little bit of that up under the brow, just under the highest point. Okay, we've got to see some of this on the lid. 
Hmm, it, the color is kind of translating there. I'm popping it kind of on the center, well, most of the lid. I'll leave the innermost part. It really is truly showing up. You know, I you can get right in there and you can see like that is showing up in an opaque way on my eyelids. And then I think I'll take some of the white and just further brighten right in here. I almost want to blend it up into the crease just a little bit just to see. I think it's adding just a bit of darkness there. Then maybe we go into this with, I'm using my E36, my wispy white brush. And I'm using that more like a transition shade now. And then we're going to use that shade to smudge a little bit down here on the lower lash line. I mean, you see the difference? It's providing just a little bit of definition. It's the kind of eye look that's probably not going to like majorly, majorly impress somebody, but it doesn't look bad. Honestly, what I would do, I would say just go for the mink single. I mean, that one shade can do it all. And it's a little prettier than any of these just flat out laid on the lid, full on. The sheen in that one is really pretty. These shades kind of struggle to have any sort of real sheen. I mean, this one, if we laid it on thick, it would have a little bit more. But I kind of like it as my smudgy liner down there. Bun check. I'm going to do one more thing here as I look at this little palette. I'm going to do the shimmer shade with a slightly smaller brush. And sometimes this is what you have to do. If you're playing with a shadow that's not doing maybe quite as much as you hoped it would, play with the way you're applying it, the spot, the places on the eye where you're putting it, and also the methods and brushes that you're using. And I feel like with a smaller brush, I can get even more out of that shadow. We're relying on that shadow a lot in this little palette. So as far as eyeliner and mascara goes, those were a couple of categories where I just didn't find things that fit what I was trying to get to in this video, which was mainly like shades that perform a little differently or better than you might expect, or maybe textures, but I just didn't have a product where it was like, oh, wow, it can do that. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and off camera. I'm not gonna do any eyeliner today. I'm just gonna curl my lashes. I'll apply my Lash Princess from Essence to the top, my Hourglass um, Unlocked Instant Extensions on the bottom, and then we'll talk about lips. Okay, guys, are you ready for the lip product that totally takes me by surprise and I like a lot better than I think I would just by the looks of it? Okay, this is from e.l.f., and the shade here is called Tea Rose. It looks practically like a light lilac there in the stick, you know, like a light to medium lilac kind of shade. It's one of their matte lip crayons. By the way, you have a little sharpener to keep the tip uh, precise if you want to there on the bottom, but I'm gonna pop this on. And for me, it takes me like a second to adjust to this shade, like adjust my eyes to what I'm seeing on my lips, but I end up really liking it. I like it just a little bit sheared out, so you might see me taking my finger over it. I just kind of work it in a little bit more to my lip color, and I feel like it ends up being the coolest pink. And every skin tone's different, and every person is, you know, a little bit different where lip colors are concerned, but I actually kind of like that shade. I think it's pretty. I think I'd really like it even with a more dramatic eye, and this being the soft lip take instead of maybe going to a nude or just a toasty neutral. I actually think this color's kind of cool. But anyway, guys, that is my look today. What was the biggest surprise to you in this video? Let me know in the comments section, and also let me know what products do you feel like at a glance, just for whatever reason, and they do not look that impressive, but they give you a different experience as you apply them on the skin. Thank you so, so much for your time, and I will see you again soon. Bye.